Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to our midweek message. And tonight I want to talk about friendship. And this kind of came about. I was I was having a conversation with my best friend about three weeks ago. And my best friend knows me extremely well. We've been friends since college, and he knows how I'm doing even when we haven't talked. Like he knows how I'm doing, even if we haven't talked in a while. He knows when something's off by the tone uh, in my voice. He knows there's the personal trends that I have that have been a part of me for a long time. He knows the ruts that that I can fall into. He knows the temptations that I have. He 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 knows the warning signs uh, of when I'm not doing well. And so we have this conversation about three weeks ago, and. As, as we're talking, at one point in our conversation, he, he says, well, there you are. Uh, and, and, and I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, finally, there you are. I was starting to be concerned about where you were at. And, uh, and, and, and I was like, well, what do, you, what do you mean by that? And, and what he started to share was how he'd been concerned about me and, and through our conversation, as he was talking to me, he was able to bring about uh, that version of myself, the, the version of myself that God's designed me to be. And he could tell from how I had been uh, acting and things I had been sharing with him uh, in the last couple weeks that, that were before our conversation, he had developed concerns. And through our conversation, he was able to bring out... Uh, the best in me. He was able to, to identify where I wasn't and help me get back to the place I needed to be, the place that God desires for me to be at, mentally, uh, emotionally, and all, and all those things. And and after I hung up the phone from, it's funny, we say uh, hung up the phone. Most of you now probably watching this don't even know what that means anymore. When someone says, I'm going to hang up the phone, uh, you just press end now. But but as I ended that phone call, I, re I remember thinking just about the power of friendship and how I needed that conversation for where, my, where I was at, my headspace, all of that. I needed to have that conversation with my friend. I needed that interaction with someone who knew me deeply. Now, I, I don't know about how you respond to difficult circumstances or or, or a particular struggle that you have. But for me, when I find myself in a difficult situation or wrestling through something, I tend to pull back. I tend to isolate myself. And it, it, it's not a good thing. It's not a God thing. It's a Steve thing, unfortunately. And I was guilty of doing that before I, I had that conversation with my friend. I was starting to isolate myself. And I needed... Our friendship. I needed. Uh, I needed that help to be reeled back in. Essentially, I needed that phone call. I needed that conversation. I needed laughter. I needed truth from from someone who God knew I would receive it from, and I needed to hear it from someone who desires God's best for me. Someone who cares about me walking in a manner worthy of my calling. And, uh, you know, at, as, as we look at even just creation, at each step, uh, as God was creating the world, we, we hear him pronounce everything was good, right? As he's, as, he's, as he's creating the world, after each step, it talks about how it was good. But then there's something very interesting. After he created Adam, we see him make an alarming statement. And the statement was this. Something, something is not good. In fact, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So something's not good. So now, now here's the reality uh, that we see from this. Adam was still not complete, right? He needed something. He needed community. Now, what, what does this show us? 
Now, for a lot of us, we're like, well, of course, it shows me that I need a girlfriend or a boyfriend or I, I need a spouse. And, and that's a verse that we typically go back to, especially us that want a spouse, and we present it to God and say, hey, God, uh, just so you know, you said this and that it's not good for me to be alone. So where is she or where is he? And, uh, and we use that against God. But, but that's not essentially what it's saying here, right? It, it, it's talking about this, this community that was needed and... You know, when we when we think about our deepest problems, right? These deepest these deep sins that we wrestle with, pride, idolatry. Um, you know, th- those are deep rooted problems. But you know what? Our, our our first problem was that we see here. The first, it was not good. Uh, it was social isolation. And I think for a lot of us right now, in particular, we're fighting this. And maybe we haven't even identified it or labeled what the problem is, but this is the problem, this isolation. And, 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 and here's the reality, especially you're, you may be in denial if you're a, an independent person or maybe an introvert, uh, and, and, and we're, we're battling this. This isolating feeling, this emotion, this this headspace that we're taking ourselves in, or for some of us, we're choosing to isolate ourselves even more from the isolation uh, that our culture right now is is dictating. And and the Bible warns us about isolation, especially from friends. In um, in Proverbs eighteen uh, one, it says, "Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire; he breaks out against." All sound judgment. That is scary, right? So, so this this was the road when I when I look at that verse, like like that's the road that I was headed down. And some of you are on that road right now. You're on this road, um, seeking your own desire, breaking out against sound judgment. And what does that look like? Well, I think for some of us, maybe on this road right now, you've reacted in ways you typically don't react. You said things that you wouldn't typically say to people that you love. And, 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 and you've seen that in you. And for some of you, you've even asked, you've looked in the mirror and you're like, where did that come from? Like, like that wasn't me. Where, where did, where did that come out of? And, and who was that? <laughs> and, and yet you're still, you're stuck looking in the mirror. It was, it was you. And when you think about it, it comes from this isolation where you start to seek your own desire and you start to go against sound judgment. And this was the road, once again, I found myself headed on. And maybe you're on that right now. You know, when I lived in San Diego, uh, there was a coastal fog that would sometimes roll in right off the ocean there. And as you're driving on the freeway, in particular, it was the five freeway that would go uh, up and down the coast. Um, There were times when it was so foggy, and I remember one time in particular, it was so foggy, I couldn't see anything except the white line on the side of the road. And so I remember just hugging that white line and looking towards it as I was trying to stay just on the freeway. And as I was focused on that white line, um, I, I all of a sudden found myself on a road that did not seem to be the freeway anymore. And what had happened was I hugged that white line to the point of getting off on the wrong exit. And I think for for some of us right now, we're allowing just the fogginess of the isolation that we find ourselves in to cause us to make some wrong exits or turns in how we're uh, behaving and, and how we're acting mentally, emotionally, how we're treating people, uh, the decisions that we're making. Or maybe we're seeing this in a friend right now. And the reality is we need help or we need to be the help. In, in, in either getting ourselves back on the road or helping someone else. You know, in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 4, verses nine and, t- and 9 and 10, it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. That's what, you know, like when we look at this, this uh, in isolation, you can not only become your worst enemy, we see, but you can fall and who is going to help you get back up. So we need relationship. We need friendship. 
See Proverbs 27, 9 and 10. Oil and perfume make the heart glad, and the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. Do not forsake your friend and your father's friend. And I think that's what I experienced, the sweetness of counsel from a true friend, and it helped pick me back up. You need that. You need to be that for other people. You need to help them. That's the beauty of friendship, of the power of relationship that you see that God has designed it to be. Do you realize the the deep connections of friendship that we see in the Bible and the power those relationships had at specific moments? You know, and, and the reality is it didn't always look the same, right? Like, like there was mentor relationships that were very strong. There was, uh, you see spouses, you know, husband and wives had, that had a strong connection in the Bible. You see co-laborers um, and, and, and you see how, how, you see the power of those relationships and how they deeply impacted not only those individuals, but the people that they were ministering to or called to. We see Jesus invite uh, his closest followers uh, with him into the garden, into some of his uh, most powerful moments. And, and we see he had this inner circle of friendships within his group of followers. Uh, we see in Paul's letters, as you read his letters, you see specific relationships, you see specific people that he mentions that deeply impacted him, that he cared deeply about, and that were so helpful in, in the gospel advancing, in the effectiveness of his ministry. You know, we look at David. David had multiple relationships, but maybe the, the most famous friendship that we see, maybe in the, in the entire Bible, is David and Jonathan. And in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1, it talks about this friendship and it describes to us just the strength of it. It says, as soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Man, so the, this, the essence of friendship, to love another as you love yourself, there is power in that. And they had such a powerful friendship there. And in verse 4, it actually talks about how Jonathan sacrificed for David, stripping himself of the items which represented uh, his power and position, and he gave them to David. See, Jonathan was the legitimate successor to his father's throne. But in giving his robe uh, to David, he indicated that he was willing to forgo his right in order to see David crowned instead. Jonathan was loyal to David, warning him of his father's intent to kill him. These two friends uh, shared this incredible, uh, this this close emotional uh, bond. They displayed love, loyalty, transparency. And, and just as, as he was willing to forgo uh, this, this, his right, right, as, 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 the, as the next king in order to, to, to allow David to be all that God had called David to be, you think of that incredible bond to where uh, he literally uh, places uh, his friendship with David. He allows that to take precedence over his right, over his own advancement empowering David to become all that David was called to be by God, knowing that it was going to be something that he was supposed to have. Isn't that incredible to think of a relationship like that and a friendship to that degree? You know, there are times uh, God's going to desire to use us to help bring about change in, in a friend's life or somebody else's life. Sometimes it's helping to protect them from themselves. Sometimes it's defending them from the outside. Sometimes it's timely wisdom, encouragement, empowerment, picking them back up when they've fallen. You know, Jesus, it talks about in John chapter 15 that Jesus came as a friend of sinners, befriending all who trust and follow him. Says he came to lay his life down for his friends. You know, he's the ultimate friend. He chose to befriend you and I. He chose to respond when we needed him most. Will you now be a friend for someone else who needs to hear from God through you? Who do you need to reach out to right now in this season? Who's struggling? Who is God placing on your heart right now? And I want to just encourage you to respond to respond to his calling, to allow him to befriend you, to meet you in this isolation. But I want to also challenge you to think of somebody else 
that you need to call right now. Someone else that you need to help pick up. Someone that you need to empower. Someone that you just need to speak truth and love into their lives. And I want you to do that uh, during this time where we find ourselves battling this, 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 really this, this danger, this enemy of isolation. And allow God to use you through his power to bring about change to bring just that, that sweetness, that, th- those words that bring hope and healing, to allow God to pick someone else up. He wants to use you in that. He wants to use our church in that. So let's respond. Amen. God bless you.